Hey guys, welcome to part three of Odyssey of Fire concept art. Last image I showed you guys is this picture of Abaka, otherwise known as Greenbeard, the mentor figure throughout the first book and one of the most important characters. Here we have an image of Abaka facing down an alien creature of some sort. He is a highly intelligent person that has this awesome magic ability, like psychic magic ability. It's really interesting. Here's another picture of Abaka. I really liked drawing Abaka because he's like a very scraggly old wizard dude. Like I said, I plan on Liam Neeson probably playing him and I feel like he'd do a great job. He, so you can see his beard is all messed up. He's got his javelin with like auras of magical energy like blurring out around his javelin. Here's some concept art of some nilts. Nilts are rat-like people. They're gonna look a lot different in the end because th these look very much like just humanoid rats, right? Well, this one looks a little more monstrous, but like they have more alien-like features in the end. They're gonna have like s really long snouts that have like s like 14 nostrils and they're gonna look really cool. And they breathe like pipes and smoke comes out of all their nostrils. Here's a crazy looking character. He's a blue alien guy. He's got like, gauges in his earlobes and they're weighed down by like, like lots of weight. And he's got this really intricate sword, really muscular dude, really like very blunt power. This is a Pedelheim. They're a, a Malvir race. I know it says demon race, but Malvir are like the physical forms of demons, or, but they're not demons. They're just, they have similar qualities to demons. See, demons are more spiritual creatures, whereas Malvir are more physical beings. Here's a picture of a turret, heavy artillery, and with this tank here. And this tank is going to be something that has to face off against this turret's this is what uh, Sui's armor is going to look like in the finale. You can see she's got these awesome looking greaves that match her like her bracers. And she's got this long coat like leather with chain pauldrons and brown leather pants. And it's really cool. George's armor, which is also made of leather but with some metal pieces on it. Also this like really tough soft it's soft like to the touch but like it's tough on the inside and he's got these bracers and a cape. This is during the finale. Here we have uh, a character named Bula. Uh, this is just his armor and you see he's got this heavy suit of metal armor and lots of cool accented pieces like these bracers and these boots that have like spikes on the tips of them. Here we have a early sketch of what LaRue was going to look like. As you can see he's actually white. I decided I wanted to make him black. He's always had a French accent but like I wanted to make him black to be more diverse. But here's his staff in the finale and this is what he this is what he's actually gonna wear in the finale like something similar to this but with, with armor pieces on it. Here's a picture of Kelop. He's a, uh, a giraffe-like person, as you can see. He's got features similar to the Alutaki. He's got the forearms and the six fingers on each hand. But he's got like a long neck and a giraffe-like head. Although he doesn't have any fur, he's just got, you know, he, his skin with like spots on his skin. And he's pretty cool. He's like the tallest character, probably. Here we've got a scythe that's wielded by a pretty important character I can't really name without spoiling a major concept. Here we have an emblem uh, that belongs to Abaka, although I can't say exactly what it means or what it's about because it's a major spoiler. Here we have a picture of a creature. I don't really have a name for it, but it's this like bull-like creature with four ears and huge wings that are kind of cut off from the page but pretty monstrous animal and it can fly. 
Also, there's this this creature. It's another dragon-like humanoid. It's not like a Dracation. These are more dragon-like in appearance. They've just got like humanoid bodies. Pretty interesting. I might. They're not really anything special like the Dracations, but I might add something to them. Maybe give them really massive manes coming off of the back of their head. I can now always add that into this drawing, which is never colored or anything. Oh, here's an awesome picture of Thasian. Very oh, kind of another quick sketch, of course, but. As you can see, this is what his body type looks like, although it's a lot more... He's wearing armor here, and he's um, he, he's really extremely skinny, like bone skinny, like, like a skeleton. Uh, it's hard to tell that from his armor here, and kind of my art style is more... Not really the most realistic, but as you can see, he's really skinny. I'm not going to say what this is, but just know... It's important. And that's all we've got uh, out of the stuff for the spark anyway. All the first book has all these drawings here. And there's more, plenty more drawings that I have. They just, they're all things that I've decided to put into later parts of the story. Like the second book and the third book and all the way up to the finale. And there's going to be six books in total, and I'll just say that the first book is on its way. We are still in the process of editing it, and once the book is published, I'm hoping to get some investors interested in funding a pilot episode for a TV series. And I want to get Liam Neeson to play Abaka, and I want to find some talented actors that aren't really super well known to play a lot of the younger characters, especially Suey. Like, whoever gets to play Suey, like, I, I truly believe they're going to be a huge star. Like, one of the biggest stars in all of Hollywood. Because, in my belief, Odyssey of Fire is just going to be such a huge deal. Like, so many people are going to love it. That's the goal. I just, I believe it's going to touch a lot of people's hearts. So many people are going to connect with it, I believe, in these times that we're living and how things are changing, and I think it's going to resonate with people for uh, years to come. And that's, that's my intention, is to have my art speak to people's souls. Odyssey of Fire is a journey through the soul, and I think it's important for people to understand that before they read the book, that it's not your average fantasy sci-fi novel it's, it's much more than that at least that's what i'm intending for it to be i believe you know the right people who buy the book and really get invested in it they'll connect with a lot of things and maybe not everyone will understand some of the themes because it's aimed towards younger audiences but I think they'll have a feeling and some sort of uh, subconscious connection to a lot of the themes, the heavy theme. And they'll, they'll probably learn a lot from Odyssey of Fire. And as they're, they're all you know, young people in the society that we live in, having to understand what life is about and what their lives can be if they just find the deepest roots within themselves to understand their self, self-reflection. Uh, that's an important part of Odyssey of Fire. Uh, spirituality. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, religion is for people afraid to go to hell, but spirituality is for people who have already been there. And this is a major thing, like probably the biggest theme in all of Odyssey of Fire is overcoming difficulty and overcoming the ego uh, and the obstacles of the ego and the, the darkness within the mind and the soul that affects the physical vessel that we all reside in, if that makes sense. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed all the art that I showed. I hope you look forward to seeing more, and Odyssey of Fire is the biggest project that Fancore Entertainment aims to do. For the Fancore!